promised us that he would be well, hello once again I do thank you for joining me today for Carrier of His Presence broadcast. My name is Elder Jesse Darrow, and I am going to teach you today from the Word of God. Something that the Lord has put on my heart these last few weeks, and I, I started teaching last week on leadership. If there was ever a time in church history where we need Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized teachers, it is now. And so I came up with the topic, leadership, effective leadership 101. And I started that topic last week. And as I prepared for this week, just to continue, I thought that I would remind you when the Lord came on the scene that the Pharisees were leaders at that time. And there is such a religious attitude about the word of God that it keeps people more in bondage than bring the liberties that the Lord have called for. And since there's, we're at such a place where there's a great falling away of the faith and there's such a humanistic attitude People tend to want to leave the Lord out of their decisions, and our arrogance leaves us under the impression that he, we have more sense than what we really have. Um, I think it's a good idea to kind of remind people of how important it is for us to rise up as leaders. Now, to make sure that you understand when I say leader, if you're born again, if you are filled with God's spirit, you are a leader. You are anointed and you have a purpose inside of you. So a lot of times we may just lead one or two people or influence one or two people, not necessarily a great multitude. Uh, but if you're born again, I need to remind you that you are a leader, that God's very precious Holy Spirit have been given to us to guide us into all truth. So my mind had taken me to um, the time David encountered Goliath. Well, we say we are really, really familiar with that. It's one of the oldest teachings that there is, but I thought I would extract a few ideas from David's encounter with Goliath just to enhance our understanding of how important it is for us to be effective in our leadership. So I was just sharing some ideas with my husband this morning, and he reminded me of something that just, I mean, it just took me to such a place of excitement when he reminded me of Gideon and those that ended up winning against the Midianite under Gideon's leadership. And so from that discussion, I said, my goodness, that's what we need. This 300 men in the uh, seventh chapter of Josh, uh, the seventh chapter of Judges, there's a symbolism there uh, in my mind. And that 300 is symbolic to me of those who are constantly battle, battle ready. And as we got into the discussion, I thought about how. Um, Gideon started out with 30,000 soldiers and the Lord spoke to Gideon and reminded Gideon and, and told Gideon that, you, you know, you have too many, uh, get rid of some of the ones and uh, the, some of that 30,000. And so Gideon just asked flat out, well, who's afraid? Who's afraid to go into battle? Well, 20,000 was afraid. And when I say that, I'm not saying that because it's funny. It's just good to be honest. You don't want to go into battle, then don't go into battle. Now, I'm talking now spiritually and not uh, encouraging a soldier to defect or to go AWOL. I'm talking spiritually now. I'm talking about in the kingdom of God. But it was just so ironic to me that 20,000 men were honest. And they were saying, I'm afraid. Well, then that left 10,000. And you would think to go into battle that... 10,000 would have been sufficient to, to the Lord. And so the Lord said, no, no, that's still too many. 
you go into battle with 10,000, then man will say, we won and take the glory away from God. So the Lord said, I tell you what, send them down to the lake and the ones that lap like dogs, those are the ones that I'm going to choose for you to go into battle. Well, there was 300. So we're going from 30,000 to 300. And, the, and, I, and I kept looking. I kept reading back over, reading back over to refresh my mind. And I really could not quite understand the position that these soldiers were in that the Lord chose them. But they were obviously, there was, in my mind, there was a distinct distinction between being on your knees and lapping like a dog. So my mind told me that this 300 stooped. So that means they were still on their feet and they were able to spring to action at any moment. And they would drink, but they were constantly watching, constantly aware of their surroundings. And so I'm saying, you know what? That's what we need today. We need leaders who are ready to spring to action who are constantly watching to see what the Lord is saying, that our eyes are trained, glory be to God, to see what the Lord sees, that our hear, ears are trained to hear what the Lord is saying, and our hearts are ready to spring to action in obedience to the prompting of the Spirit. So I really, really hope that this teaching on effective leadership is going to be a blessing to you. And I thought that I would use uh, Gideon and I would use David when he came up before Goliath in um, 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, as um, models of good, effective leadership. Because this is truly the time and this is the hour where we need godly leaders in our midst. These are difficult times and difficult times calls for a different kind of leader. Both David and Gideon were different kinds of leaders. So one of the things that I thought that is an indicator of a different kind of leader is perspective. Your, the perspective is not status quo. The perspective is different. When people are satisfied with doing the same things, the same way, week after week, year after year, the leaders that God is calling forth now, that special 300, um, they have a different perspective. And just think, when Goliath stood before the armies of Israel and he was breathing out threatenings and slaughter and leaving Israel under the impression that there was no hope for them and they were going to have to yield and cave in to the threats of Goliath. David had a different perspective. As a matter of fact, when we read the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, it's like, you know what, how dare you? uncircumcised Philistine? In other words, you're not even in covenant with the Most High God. How dare you think that you're going to win against the armies of God? So a good, effective leader have a different perspective. One leader will look at a situation and they will say, you know what, there ain't nothing I can do. The leaders that God is calling for now have a different perspective and they're saying, you know what, I, through my own strength, can do nothing. I know not through my might, and I, kn I know not through my power, I can do anything. But it's going to be through God's spirit that we're going to win, and we're going to be victorious in what the Lord would have us to do. So one of the things that's important, when, when, when you're called to do something differently, that you have a different perspective than the status quo. The only thing I can tell you is like my husband said this morning, that means that you are one of the 300 that, ah, that God is calling for in this hour. That special 300 that does things differently, that's always battle ready, that's very, very watchful, very vigilant and circumspect because they are mindful of the dangers of the times that we're in today. Amen. Another uh 
thing that I think is important for us to take a look at is method. <laughs> the leaders today, they're going to use a different method than what was used naturally or what is commonly understood. For an example, we are very, very familiar with the fact that David used a slingshot and one stone. I mean, he had five, but he only used one to take down Goliath. And Gideon's army had trumpets and torches and lanterns. That's it. <laughs> and they won a battle. So it's a different method even. We, if, if we're trying to win battles and we're using the same method, that's still called insanity. What God is doing today, we can no longer use the same methods, but we've got to be able to be battle ready and be ready to do something different that's going to be effective for the kingdom of God. Another thought that came to my mind as I, as I read um, David's encounter with Goliath and refreshed my mind about Gideon's encounter with the Midianites is we're going to have a different conviction. And that different conviction is going to be what I once believed, and it may have worked at one time, but we understand now the cloud has moved and there's a shifting Glory be to God in the spirit of God. And now we come under a different conviction. Israel was saying they were afraid. They were ready to flee. David shows up on the scene, this new leader. And they're saying, and David is saying, oh, no, no, uh, -uh no. You do not come up against the army of God and expect us to, to flee, to expect us to back down. Even, you know, I've often wondered, was David afraid? So I said, even in our fear, because I have a personal, I'll say perspective, understanding, definition, however you would want to word. I have my own personal ideology about fear. Fear is never anything that to me is an indication of cowardness. Fear just means this is something uncertain. I know what the outcome is going to be, and I may be afraid. But when we are courageous, we go ahead and we move forward and do what we know needs to be done. So fear, we can't allow our fears to hinder us, praise God, from doing what we know the right thing to do. But we have to come under conviction. David comes on the scene. He goes to visit with his brothers. He sees this giant breathing out threatenings and slaughters and just really insulting the army of God, which means that God himself is going to be insulted as well. David rises up in the conviction and said, oh, no, 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 no. You're not in covenant with the Most High God. I'm in covenant with the Most High God, and I'm going to rely on him to bring you down. And that takes a strong leader to have that type of conviction. So conviction. A different type of conviction is going, to, is going to be what is called for today. Not status quo, but a new type of conviction that causes us to rise up in boldness so that we can be effective in the kingdom of God. Something else that is very effective is a different vision. Now think about this. The average Christian... Uh, goes to church on Sunday morning, sometimes uh, Sunday school, sometimes just worship service. Uh, they go to Bible study on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, whatever the Bible study day is. Uh, sometimes there's that involvement. They may be rehearsals. That's their spiritual reality. What they do mechanical, what they do methodical. But when you are a visionary, that vision takes us beyond what is ritualistic or what is method methodical. David had a vision, and it was not in the first chapter of uh, uh, First Samuel, rather the seventh chapter. But I remember so well that he was David was so dissatisfied that the Ark of the Covenant was not in Jerusalem. Now this is visionary. And it just, he wanted to build the house of God. That was his vision. And so David ended up bringing the ark of God 
back to Jerusalem. And even though the ark was in a tent until Solomon built the temple, the point that I'm getting to is the other leaders were satisfied with the ark of the covenant being in another city. But David is saying, no, Lord, your name, your name is in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place that we're supposed to worship. So being a visionary, this was not when he was a young boy, but after he became king, a good leader always has a vision. A good leader sees beyond right now. A good leader is able to see beyond where they are right now in this particular day, in this particular time, and in this particular season. So what the Lord is calling now is leaders that have vision, that have a different perspective, a different method, and a different conviction so that whatever the vision is, that we'll be able to carry that vision out to the glory of God. And it's something that is so important that we do not make what we do about ourselves, that we do not do what we do so that we can look good before man, but that we do what we do so that our God can be glorified in the work that he has put our hands to do. Something else that I thought was really, really, really important that uh, is, it just enhances a good leader's effectiveness, and that is our experience. I'm going to share with David, and then I want to share a, just a few minutes with my own personal experience. David was a shepherd boy. And you say, okay, and? But he was learning at that time how to take care of the people of God because he took care of his father's sheep. And I've been always impressed with the fact that as a shepherd boy, David came up against a lion and a bear. And there's nothing to, nothing to indicate that he had a Uzi. Nothing. There's nothing to indicate that he had a pistol. There's nothing to indicate that he had a knife. Apparently, I'm thinking David took on a lion and a bear with his bare hands. And so he had experience. He had experience when he came up against Goliath. It was almost like, look, he's a piece of cake. Goliath is a piece of cake if I could take on a lion and a bear in the name of the Lord. And I think that that's very, very key uh, to our success is that what we do, that we know we're doing it for the glory of God in the name of God. And when I say in the name of God, I mean in the authority that he has given us to rule and to reign in his name. And I often remember as a young convert myself, boy, if my experiences in this particular walk was not hard. What I did not know was, was the Lord was preparing me for such a time as this, that the Lord took me that he blessed me and that he put solid footing, put me on solid footing, even in spite of all of the trials and all of the uh, many, many disappointments that I had um, in, my younger, in my younger life. But it was to prepare me for such a time as this. So there's the experience that is so important that we end up uh, uh, relying on the Lord uh, as he takes us through difficult times, difficult passages. It's so important that we rely on the experiences that the Lord have given us. And why are these experiences so important? Because it's going to change our perspective. We will not have status quo perspective. It's going to change our methods even. We will not have the usual methods. We will not use the usual methods that uh, uh, people in the status quo arena are using. Our convictions will be different. From the experiences we have in the kingdom of God, our conviction is going to be different. Our vision, the vision that the Lord have given us, 
that's going to be different. Glory be to God. So all of these challenges that we have before us, the ups, the downs, the uncertainties, uh, the, the sleepless nights, whatever the challenge is, to me, everyone have ended up being some type of growth, some type of development that have made me stronger, that have made me more determined. And you know what? And have enhanced my love for God. Because I tell you, if our God does not have the most dynamic ways of delivering us, uh, just think, when Gideon went into battle, the trumpet sounds and they have lanterns. Wait a minute. See, you know, it's like you got to get this one. How many times have you thought the worst and you had so very little to work with and what you thought was going to be the worst, God turned it around into a good thing and what you felt was very little to work with, God turned it around and made it very, very, very effective. It's happened so many times that now I try so hard to be mindful of not complaining, not worrying, but maintaining the faith of God because I know that truly the Lord has my back. And the last point that I wanted to bring up was our attitude. Our attitude has got to be so different. If we are going to be effective leaders, for this particular hour, our attitude has to be different. I think that it's time for the church to heal. I think it's time for us not to be so easily offended. Offenses are going to come. And people are entitled to their attitude. I mean, it's offensive to many people that on any given Sunday morning, I am the one that's up teaching rather than my husband. But guess where the anointing for teaching is? It's upon me, and it's not upon my husband. Can he teach? Absolutely. But this is not the work that he has called me to. So when someone voices their opinion, rather than me being offended by someone's opinion, when I know in my heart of heart what the Lord has called me to do, I respect that's their perspective, but not taken offense. So today, we are called to have a different attitude about what the Lord have calls, uh, called us to do. Effective leaders will have a different perspective. Effective leaders will use different methods. What may have worked many, many years ago, it's not working anymore today. Effective leaders will come under conviction. There are things that we see going on that we cannot put up with. There are some things that we may even have done at one time in our life, but our belief system is different because we're growing. Do you know one of the things that I learned many, many years ago, and that was I heard a saying, and it said, you know the last seven words of a dying church? We have never done things like this before. Those are the last words of a dying church. When someone wants to do something different, the first thing someone wants to do is push back, be offended, and because it's never been done like this before, then they say, no, we can't do that. But uh, the leaders today, they're going to come under conviction, and they're going to believe that something has to be done differently. Also, our new leaders are visionaries. We have to see beyond right now. We've got to rely on our experience. We've got to rely on our knowledge. And also, we've got to have a different attitude. So glory be to God. I really hope that this is a blessing to you. I do apologize for the background noise. I forgot to turn my cell phone off. Ah. But I hope that what was said, glory be to God, was a blessing to you. If this uh, broadcast has been a blessing to you, my husband and I have a ministry. We meet every Sunday morning at 9.30, uh, every Sunday morning at Dunamis Outreach. It's located in the city of Flint 
at Stewart Street and Wisner. We will be elated for you to come and visit with us, especially if you visit with us because you were inspired by something from the broadcast. I hope that the blessings of God will be upon you because if you never forget, it's important to remember it is up to you and is it up to me to restore the image of Christ on this earth because we are carriers of God's presence. God bless you richly and may his grace and peace rest upon you. With a love that would not cease I tried him and I found his promises are true He's everything he said that he would be. The finest words I know could not begin to tell just what Jesus means to me. Than my mind can conceive more wonderful than my heart can believe. He goes beyond my highest hopes and fondest everything that my soul ever longed for everything God promised and so much more more than amazing more than marvelous more miraculous could ever be He's more than wonderful that's what Jesus is to me I stand amazed to think the King of glory would come to live within the heart of man I marvel just to know that he loves me when I think of who he is and who I am oh Than my mind can conceive More wonderful Than my heart can believe He goes beyond